and welcome to APTN National News. I'm Melissa Ridgen. We're starting off with the latest daily COVID-19 briefing from Ottawa. It includes ramping up possible military assistance and what the federal government is doing regarding specific requests by First Nations. But Todd Lamoran begins with the expansion of the emergency wage subsidy program. On Monday, Prime Minister Trudeau expanded the emergency wage subsidy program. Before, it had been a 75% subsidy for small and medium businesses. Now, it's any company that has suffered a 30% decline in business. But Trudeau has a warning. We are trusting you to do the right thing. If you have the means to pay the remaining 25% that's not covered by the subsidy, please do so. And if you think this is a system you can take advantage of or game, don't. There will be serious consequences for those who do. The COVID committee briefing was asked whether it would react to a request by the Southern Chiefs Organization in Manitoba to send in more doctors to help deal with potential outbreaks. Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland responded. Our job as a government is to work very hard to provide our health care system with all the resources it needs to take care of Canadians, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, and we are very aware of the particular challenges vulnerable communities face. Minister of Defence Harjeet Sajjan announced that the military was ramping up to possibly aid communities. Canadian reservists and rangers are being brought into service. These flexible teams are capable of operating as local response forces to assist with humanitarian support, wellness checks, natural disaster response and other tasks as required. I also want to emphasize that particular attention was given to Indigenous and northern and arctic communities. Minister Sajjan was asked whether his department had responded to a request for military aid by the Long Point First Nation in Quebec to help enforce confinement rules there. We are in touch with many remote communities, especially indigenous communities, and the Chief of Defence Staff has been uh, uh, planning um, uh, uh, kind of early measures of what we can do. On Tuesday, Finance Minister Bill Morneau is expected to report on the cost of the government's response. Paul Lamarand, APTN National News, Ottawa. Nunavut announced today that they remain one of the few regions in the world without a single positive test for the COVID-19 virus. Nunavut's premier shared the latest results at his daily press conference. 259 tests have been completed, 79 results have come back, all negative for COVID-19. The premier urged Nunavut to follow medical advice and to stay home. All these measures are in place for our safety. If nothing happens during this time, that's exactly the point. Still in the north, but to the Yukon, where the northernmost community of Old Crow had two unexpected and unwanted visitors on the weekend. The community of 220 people weren't pleased to see two Quebecers land in the fly-in community Friday, trying to escape the COVID-19 pandemic. The pair reportedly had sold most of their belongings and planned to stay in the community until the pandemic was over. Old Crow has a high population of elders, something that leaders feared when this pair showed up. When they were given, they were given a room for the weekend at a local co-op, and then they were put back on a plane and sent back to Quebec yesterday. We want to hear what you think about this Quebec pair seeking refuge in a remote Indigenous community. Here's how you can continue the conversation. You can send your news to or your emails to news at aptn.ca. You can find us online at aptnnews.ca and on youtube.com slash aptnnews. You can also follow APTN News on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more Indigenous news. Indigenous tourism operators in the Northwest Territories are saying that many Aurora viewing companies kept operating well after the COVID-19 threat became apparent. Our reporter Charlotte Mort Jacobs has that story. This office is usually packed. It's the busiest month for Aurora viewing in Yellowknife. Unfortunately, today is going to be our last day. Wednesday. Joe Bailey March uses the slogan, 50,000 years of experience. For his business, North Star Adventures. <laughs> but with COVID-19, he says he'll lose roughly $200,000 in revenue from the shutdown. We're a little concerned right now for going into our off-season. We usually have um, April and May to kind of uh, really ramp up because it's very busy. We, April is also good for Aurora, so that kind of generates a lot of revenue, carries us through the, the, the summer. So uh, not going to be able to do that this year. 
In its 14th year, North Star Adventures was one of the first indigenous operations in town. The company started taking measures to stop the international tourists coming in early in the new year. We saw numbers coming down when we initiated our screening policy. So we initiated our screening policy on January 25th, one of the first companies that I know of to do so. Um, and we, we made it retroactive to January 1st. So you cannot, if you travel from a certain country as of January 1st, we couldn't take your booking. And then on February 1st, we updated that because of the virus was growing globally. So as of February 1st, we added more countries. Bailey wonders why some tourism operators okay. continue taking on international tourists till March 22nd. It's not about making money, it's about the safety and welfare of our fellow men. Yeah. So, but some companies are still going. You probably saw them. The NWT government is investigating reports of seven tourists who had visited Yellowknife between February 19th and March 17th and have tested positive for COVID-19 once returning to Hong Kong. APTN reached out to the territorial government about the matter but was unable to obtain an interview before airtime. The government's got to really step up and look at their licensing. They're licensing everybody. And I remember looking at an application for a company from the United States that was going to come in for five days, do their tours and leave. And ITI up here was going to give them a license. And also, um, we really want them to get the message about quality. And you can talk to anybody in your life. That's what they want. They want quality over quantity. This morning, the NWT government declared a first ever state of emergency. That will allow government new authority to control agencies and deploy resources. With those measures in place, Bailey has no choice but to wait and see what the future holds. Charlotte Mort Jacobs, APTN National News, Yellowknife. Women's shelters across the country say that they're seeing an increase in crisis calls. And with the COVID-19 pandemic, they're taking extra precautions to keep women and children safe. APTN's Tamara Pimentel brings us this story out of Manitoba and Alberta. With only seven rooms and 32 beds, Abotan Healing Lodge in Calgary already had limited space. But with COVID-19, this Indigenous women's shelter is even more limited. So families are not only in crisis and at a risk of uh, homelessness and increased poverty and that kind of thing, but we, they are uh, uh, many unknowns about this um, COVID-19. And so or my staff have spent time with them on the telephone. Executive Director Josie Nipanak says the shelter has seen an increase in crisis calls, but mainly from single women without children who need a safe place to stay. In other circumstances, single women often share a room, but it isn't possible with social distancing protocols. We have been, for the most part, able to accommodate those calls, but because of COVID-19, we've also had to uh, increase our uh, screening in terms of asking questions now about travel, have they been sick, have they been exposed. In Winnipeg, Willow Place Women's Shelter accepts women from all over the province and often has to turn families away even when there isn't a pandemic. And unfortunately that's something that we have to deal with regularly. Being a Winnipeg shelter, you know, we provide 25% of the service in the province. Paul Wozni of Calgary City Police says police are expecting an increase in family violence calls. We do know from past experiences that major events that happen when people are holed up in their residence, there there is, a, I would say, uh, an increase in domestic violence where we see a little bit more conflict in the home, more stress certainly on the family and on the family unit. Um, and we are anticipating that in this instance. In Awutan, there are currently two families, families of two and three, in quarantine. Those families stay in their rooms and we attempt to entertain them as much as possible through books and games and that kind of thing, as well as uh, delivering their, their, their meals at the door. Not only are they not in their homes, but they're also in a new environment that uh, has quite a few restrictions. Restrictions adding even more stress to families in care. It hasn't been pleasant. I would I would say that they're enjoying their time here, but uh, nonetheless, we do what we need to do to keep um, the protocol in place. Although in-person services could feel like a risk to many clients, over the phone, counseling is always available to women in need. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Calgary. 
We need to take a short break, but there's lots more news ahead, including communities on full lockdown in an effort to prevent the virus from getting in. First, here's a look at weather for the east and central parts of Canada tomorrow. Starting off on the east coast, we've got three in Cloud and St. John's, uh, three in snow for Halifax. Happy Valley, Goose Bay, one, and snow, minus seven in mix of sun and clouds for Kujuac. St. Jovite and Montreal, six degrees, mostly sunny sky, same with Shibugamu. Toronto, rain and seven degrees, Ottawa, nine and some cloud. Sioux Lookout, lots of sunshine, nine degrees, Big Trout Lake, mostly sunny and six. Five and rain for Norway House, eight and sunny for God's Lake. Nine and sunshine for Winnipeg, ten with a mix of sun and cloud for Brandon. Regina, eight degrees and rain, twelve and rain for Esteban. Buffalo, Buffalo Nares minus 13 and snow minus 12 and mostly sunny skies for Stony Rapids. Welcome back. The ongoing issue of overcrowding in jails and prisons puts inmates at risk of infection for COVID-19. Inmates at the Ottawa Carleton Detention Centre are being are asking that more be done to head off the likely spread into jails here in Canada. Jamie Pashagamskam has this. In a statement, the Solicitor General said Ontario is stepping up measures to limit the spread of COVID-19 in its jails. But inmates here at the Ottawa Carleton Detention Centre say not enough is being done to protect them, and they don't think the staff is taking the threat seriously enough. Randy Hoskins is a member of the Miopukik First Nations in Newfoundland. Now, he's an inmate here, and he says no extra steps are being taken to clean the cells, and inmates have to do the cleaning themselves without gloves and are sometimes denied cleaning products. He's worried of the spread of infection because he has a heart condition. They don't do no cleaning. Uh, they pretty much laugh at it. Um, I heard from other guys that whenever they come in, they ask if the questions if they have a cough or if they have a, a fever, and they pretty much laugh and condescend. Jordan Land is an Inuit Ojibwe inmate here who is a particular risk because he has a history of respiratory illness. Now, he recently returned to the jail from a court appearance, and he says very little is being done to screen inmates going in and out. When I came back in court, I had left that morning. I came back in the afternoon, and they asked me three simple questions. Are you coughing? Are you sniffling? Do you feel like you have a fever? Next. That's the extent of the policy they implemented that the guards forced on the administration by keeping us locked down. We were locked down three consecutive days so that they can implement this policy that they said that they needed to have in place to keep us safe. The inmates we spoke with said they had requested hand sanitizers and masks, but were denied. APTN reached out to the Office of the Solicitor General on this, but didn't hear back. They did, however, send a statement on the measures they are taking within their jail, and they say inmates are screened for respiratory illness when they're admitted, and that the facility is inspected and cleaned daily, quote, and or as required. But this seems at odds with what we're hearing from inside. And in fact, last week, it was reported that two guards in Saskatoon tested positive for COVID-19, and in a statement today, two inmates in Quebec. So while the inmates here are doing what little they can to protect themselves, they say the widespread infection of COVID-19 in this jail is inevitable. Jamie Pashagumskum, APTN National News, Ottawa. In the Atlantic region, the first COVID-19 related death has been reported and an election has been postponed. Newfoundland and Labrador reports its very first COVID-19 related death. It was a retired man in the Eastern Health region. The confirmed cases for Newfoundland and Labrador are 139 in Nova, Nova Scotia and 127 in New Brunswick and 68, uh, no, sorry, 127 for New Brunswick has 68 and PEI has 18 cases. 
with reports of community transmissions, governments are asking people to stay at home. Meanwhile, the election for president of Nunatsivut uh, has been scheduled for May 5th, and that's now been postponed until October 6th, 2020, over concerns of the spread of COVID. First Minister Tyler Edmonds told APTN it's a constitutional response. There is a provision in our constitution that uh, overrides uh, or overacts everything else in the sense we have a responsibility to look at the, the well-being um, of that community. Many First Nations communities in Saskatchewan are restricting travel because of the pandemic, but one community is getting ready for a two-week complete lockdown. For the past two weeks, the Montreal Cree Lake, uh, Montreal Lake Cree Nation has had roadblocks in place to monitor who's entering and leaving. The community does not have any presumptive or positive cases, but starting this Friday, Montreal Lake, which is located 240 kilometers northeast of Saskatoon, is not going to be letting anybody in or out. And that lockdown will last until at least April 16th. As we go into the lockdown here on the 3rd, we will probably know whether we're going to extend uh, that date uh, probably a week into it, whether we need to or not uh, in terms of what's going on outside of our community. If we feel that it's getting too close, then uh, we'll continue on. Dozens of northern B.C. First Nations have imposed their own lockdowns. It's a preventative measure, measure they say, to keep COVID-19 out of their communities. And those communities in remote areas are far away from major medical centres, of course. The Hale Suck Nation has stopped access to non-community members, and people are allowed out only for essential travel. Bella Bella, which is located on B.C.'s central coast and is only accessible by boat or plane, has also imposed strict travel restrictions. Bella Bella Chief Councillor Marilyn Slett shared their travel procedures. Uh, a good understanding of uh, who's traveling into our community and people are self-isolating and no... Um, non-residents in in our community and when we have people from our members membership that have returned home that we're, we are requiring that they uh, complete a 14-day self-isolation it's time for us to take another break but when we come back we talk to the youngest athlete affected by the cancellation of the north american indigenous games and here's the rest of tomorrow's weather for the west and the north Starting off in northern Alberta, we got minus 9 in sunshine for high level, minus 12 in snow for Fort Chip. Minus 7 and snow for Edmonton, 0 in sunshine for Medicine Hat. Tofino, 8 and rain, 8 and mostly, or mix of sun and cloud for Kamloops. Prince Rupert, 6 degrees and sunshine, minus 4 and sunny in Dease Lake. Rock River, Mayo, minus 10 and sunny skies, minus 6 in Whitehorse. Minus 10 in sunshine for Wrigley, minus 13 and sunny skies in Yellow Knife. Fort McPherson, minus 11, and clear skies, minus 15 for Colville Lake and sunny. Chesterfield, mix of sun and cloud, minus 22. Repulse Bay, clear skies, and minus 27. Igloo Lake, minus 29, and clear. Talioak, minus 30, and clear. Pangerton, minus 27, and clear. Welcome back. With the North American Indigenous Games postponed for a year, athletes are disappointed that they won't be able to showcase their skills at an international level, and many are worried that they will be too old to compete with the Games as they're delayed. Daryl Stranger talked to one of the youngest athletes, though, who is set to participate in the Games. Last week, organizers announced the postponement of the 2020 NAG Games in Halifax until the summer of 2021. That leaves many athletes, coaches, and parents wondering what to do next. One of those athletes is Archer Wasaya Monroe Soldier from Swan Lake First Nation in Manitoba. At just 11 years old, she was going to be one of the youngest athletes at the Games. Wasaya got her start in archery as a way of helping her family hunt for food. Her mother Joanne explained that the Games were going to be a special event for the whole family to show their support well, for Wasaya. This was going to be a family event for us and we we're kind of planning our summer around it. So now that it's being postponed, we have to kind of rethink our summer. And um, we'll just see what happens in terms of the whole world of archery and when things will start up again. NAG Chair Fiona Kirkpatrick Parsons knows this is a significant blow to everyone involved. 
She says those athletes who would age out by next summer will still be eligible to participate. Anyone who would have qualified in 2020 is welcome to come back to the Games in 2021, absolutely. Even if they've aged out, uh, which of course our, our athletes are aged 13 to 19, 2021, anyone who is 19 this year, if they're going to be 20 next year, they will be coming to the Games. The Games are supposed to start next summer, but no firm dates have yet been confirmed. Daryl Stranger, ABTN National News, Winnipeg. The COVID-19 pandemic can be a scary time for some, especially elders and the young. Now the Native Women's Association of Canada has set up a phone line to offer support and advice, help alleviate some of those fears. APTN's Chris Stewart spoke to the president of the association. Being self-isolated can bring about fear and boredom. Will I get sick? What will I do until this pandemic ends? The Native Women's Association of Canada wants to help. They have set up a phone line to connect with elders who are there to help. Lorraine Whitman is the president. We know that um, being self-isolating um, can be a challenge in itself, especially for our elders. Our people are very um, social. We like to go out to dinners, to suppers. Knowing that we can't do that due to the social distancing, it leaves a lot of fear, a lot of loneliness. The elders can help by listening to your concerns, offering advice, companionship, and best practices to stay healthy. You know, when our elders, they have been answering the phone, the concerns, you know, that we're hearing on the line is, you know, food, is there going to be enough? The safety because of the violence, the increase in violence, the stress, anxiety that comes along with it. And, you know, the depression that it could put and instill in people, I've heard, you know, from other communities calls is suicide, especially with our youth, because they're wondering, you know, where do I go from here? I can't get a job. I can't go out and socialize and do what I usually do. What am I going to do? Anyone can use the service and call. The line's open for anyone. We're not putting a stop after 10 minutes. I'm sorry, we can't talk because we don't know what your concerns are. Uh, we're there to listen. We're there to give support where we can. We're there to guide you. You can call between 9 and 11 in the morning Eastern and from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern, Monday to Friday. Chris Stewart, APTN National News, Edmonton. With that COVID-19 pandemic causing so much anxiety and concern, one well-known celebrity was spotted on Vancouver's downtown east side today trying to raise spirits and give good cheer. With his unmistakable bright red suit, white beard, a jolly attitude, and a six-foot stick acting as his social distancing tool, Santa was spotted in this park recently. He was giving people advice on how to stay safe during this COVID-19 pandemic. Hello, have a great day. <laughs> there you go. Just trying to keep it positive. Safe and positive. Absolutely. Uh, any words of advice for the people out there, Santa? Wash your hands. Try to stay, get yourself a distance stick and stay this far away and you'll be fine. Wash your hands. Lucky for me, I have a distance stick. I always have. It's not just COVID related. We are all out of time for tonight. I'm Melissa Ridgen. Thanks for tuning in. You can stay up to date on the very latest on COVID-19 and any other Indigenous news by visiting our special page, uh, aptnews.ca slash COVID. Stay safe and healthy. Have a great isolated night.